coming up in the Q30 newscast. Hear how some students feel about blue light phones not working on some areas on campus. And learn about the Quinnipiac University Democrat and Republican faith at this conference. Plus, we are celebrating National Pumpkin Day by taking you to a local pumpkin patch. All this and more coming up on Q30 newscast. Good evening and welcome to this week's Q30 Newscast. I'm Alex Kendall and alongside me is Gage Kilborn. We have a lot of news to cover tonight between an exclusive live interview and a Halloween treat. There's a ton to look forward to. So make sure to stay with us all night. Let's get right into it. Have you noticed that some of the campus blue lights have been out lately, Gage? Yes, Alex. Although some of the blue lights are down, campus security has gone up. And in to fill us in more is Q30 Newscast executive producer Katie Cohen. Construction on the Quinnipiac University campus continues to impact students. As of Friday, six blue light phones located in the North Lot and the Center of Communications and Computing and Engineering Lot are out of service. This is a result of the various construction projects happening across campus right now. Blue lights are emergency alarm systems that immediately notify public safety if the button is pressed. And these security tools will not be working for an indefinite period of time, according to an email from the Chief of Public Safety, Tony Reyes. This right here is one of the many blue lights located in the North Lot and in the CCE Lot that are currently out of commission due to the ongoing construction on campus. Students on campus have varying opinions of the blue lights, some saying they feel safe here. I, I think I feel pretty safe. Pub safety is normally always around somewhere. And some are concerned. I feel like that's definitely something they should check on just in case of an emergency. Um, yeah, that's definitely something important to maintain safety on campus. Um, I feel like it could be a little scary, especially since when you call public safety, sometimes they take a little while to get to where you need to be. So I think now that it's down, there is a little nerves going on. Many female students on campus like the feeling of security and stick together to combat their fears. I do have a lot of female friends that particularly feel uh, scared to walk at night, especially if they have night classes in CAS or CCE and they feel like they need to walk with big groups or with someone else. The email from Public Safety states that officers will be patrolling more in this area, saying they will, quote, maintain high visibility. To help students feel safer, Public Safety is reminding them to download the Rave Guardian app which provides direct contact with emergency responders in the Public Safety Office. For Q30 News, I'm Katie Cohen. This past Monday, the new Recreation and Wellness Center opened for students to use some of the equipment on the second floor. The university sent an email to students mentioning that the new spaces will include a yoga and dance studio and more room for cardio. Students are now able to take classes there like Bellatone, Zumba, and yoga. Students can begin registering for fitness classes like these in the upcoming spring semester. Quinnipiac University just updated their COVID-19 policies. Student Health Services announced that students who test positive must now report their infection through an online form. Students can also get a COVID test by making an appointment with Student Health Services in the new Recreation and Wellness Center. The university will also continue using vending machines that dispense rapid COVID tests for students to use. And lastly, isolation protocols have changed. Instead of receiving a phone call on day five, students will receive an email with guidance from Student Health Services for their isolation based on the result of their day five COVID test. Quinnipiac's newest theater production, Fallen Angels, is set to open between October 28th to the 30th this weekend. Fallen Angels is a comedy by Noel Coward and focuses on two wives stuck living a life of passionless boredom. With the sudden return of an old mutual flame, their lives get shaken up. Performances of the show are taking place at Quinnipiac Theatre Arts' Center on Sherman Ave. Tickets are still on sale while seats last. Earlier today, the Department of Cultural and Global Engagement held an event for LGBTQIA and Quinnipiac to foster a more inclusive community. The conversation explored the importance and benefits of community for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, intersex and asexual community at Quinnipiac and beyond. 
Yesterday, the School of Communications hosted an influencer panel. The panel featured three influencers that spoke on their experiences in making content for different social media platforms. Panelists include TikToker Sydney Reynolds, Instagram influencer Jaden Casa, and YouTube creator Michael jo Jones. They discussed how they gathered hundreds of followers and their process for creating content on specific niches, and how they could make a career out of their passions. So when I first blew up, I remember sitting in my room and I woke up and it was on 700 k So what is going on? Like, this is so weird. It's one of those things that you don't really think is going to happen to you until it does. So it's, there's always that possibility. Um, but from there, again, it's just about retention and keep putting out stuff. We're all along those lines, but then also expanding. Still to come on the Q30 newscast tonight, we have live coverage of the political debate between the Quinnipiac Democrat and Republican organizations on campus. But first, the weather has been really unpredictable lately. Yeah, Alex, it has been such a struggle to figure out if I should wear a jacket or if I should wear shorts when I go outside. Well, Gage, no need to worry because Q30's Liz Ippolito is here to give us the latest on the weather. Thanks guys. So as you can see here, the weather is pretty unpredictable this week. You could see we start at the low 70s and go into high 50s at, towards the end of the week. It goes from cloudy to sunny to cloudy and who knows where it's going to be next. So stick with us so more weather after the break. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the song. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tape. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? What? My. Oh. <laughs> If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive bust. Welcome back to the Q30 newscast. Outside our studio, the Quinnipiac Democrats and the College Republicans held their annual debate as Election Day approaches. To give us the inside scoop, Vanessa Blasi is live with participants from the debate. Thanks, Gage and Alex. It's going great. I'm right here where the Quinnipiac Democrats and the College Republicans just finished their annual debate. I'm with Quinnipiac Democrat Representative Stephanie Suarez. Stephanie, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so first off, how do you think the debate went tonight? Overall, I think it was a great debate. It was both sides coming together, talking about controversial issues that are relevant to our society right now. And you know, we had some lighthearted fun, but it also showed that bipartisanship is possible in today's society. Yes. Um, during the debate, you mentioned that if you're pro-life, the path to saving most lives is pro-choice. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little what you mean by this? Yes, so I think that at the end of the day, when we look at it, not every situation can be looked at black and white. There are so many different factors that go into it. And I think that that is one of the crucial issues that goes into being pro-life. Thank you. Um, so of the topics discussed in the, debate, in the debate, which do you believe are the most important for Quinnipiac students as we're entering voting? 
I think that I would have to say definitely when it comes to elections, because make sure you vote on November 8th, um, because it's something that's relevant to us. Even if it's something that seems so far off in the future that won't affect us, it is currently very relevant in our society. And I would also say uh, reproductive rights, because as we just saw with the Supreme Court, with the overturning of Roe v. Wade, it's something that's going to affect our generation, and it's in our hands to do something about it. Lily, do you have any predictions for the upcoming election? I think that, you know, we have to watch closely. And right now, it's a twist and a turn. We don't know where it could go, so make sure you vote. Um, but yeah, I think we're just going to have to keep a, watch, a close watch on this one. Yeah, so you talked a little bit about it before, but why do you think it's important for Quinnipiac students, or at least college students our age, to be voting in this election and upcoming elections? Well, overall, I think it's important that we always have an idea of what's going on in society, what is the, break, uh, the relevant news and everything that's happening, and I think that making sure that you're going out, expressing your right to vote, making sure that the changes you want to happen are happening by expressing your right to vote is something that we need to do as a society, and it starts with the younger generation. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Stephanie. I really appreciate it. Yes, of course. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, so as we switch over to the representative for the College Republicans, Miles Ellsworth, let's check out what the debate looked like tonight. Each of the parties brought one or more representatives to speak on each of the following issues. A to Ukraine, censorship, the Green New Deal, reproductive rights, prescription drugs, and the process of voting. Now, back outside the studio, we have Miles Ellsworth. Miles, thank you for joining us tonight. Of course. First off, how do you think the debate went? You know, I think the debate went really well. I think that it takes a lot of courage to go out there and stand in front of your friends and say some things that are maybe politically controversial, maybe taboo in public. And I think it was really important for us to create a safe space for that. And I think that's what we accomplished tonight. And it was great to see how much we agreed across the aisle. I wish maybe Washington worked a little bit more like that. But I think that at the end of the day, it's our generation, which is, our, which is the future of our country. And seeing tonight gives me hope. Yes. So you mentioned during the debate um, that you think Election Day should be a national holiday. Can you explain a little more why you think this, why this might encourage more people to vote? Yeah, so I guess I'll answer the second part of that first. So right now, election day is on a Tuesday. Most people work on Tuesday. So between you know your nine to five job and dropping the kids off at soccer practice and everything else that we got going on in our lives, it's really hard to find the time to go in and vote. That's why I think it's important that we make election day a federal holiday so that every American has the opportunity to voice, to, to have their voice heard. And I think that's, important with that. I also th think that's why I support mail-in voting. That's why I support early voting, too. Yeah. Of the topics discussed tonight, um, which do you think are the most important for Quinnipiac students as we enter voting next week? Yeah, so I'd say number one is probably reproductive rights, just because um, we've had one rule that I think was sort of hold steady for 50 years, and now all of a sudden that's changed. And I think the people who we elect and the laws they're going to make are going to be impacting us for another generation. So it's important that we keep that in mind when we're voting. Yeah, and what is one prediction you have for the upcoming election? Yeah, so usually the party that's not in power tends to do well during the midterms. So I think you're going to see a little bit of a red bump, but I think it's too early to tell. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. That's all I have over here, but don't stick with us because tonight, later on, we have Julia with National News. Meet the scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. Thank you. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at savedbythescan.org. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. 
After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back to the Q30 Newscast. Now, Gage, we got a quick glimpse of the weather earlier this show. I wonder if Liz is still here. Yeah, Alex, I would really like to know what is coming of this following week. Liz, do you have more weather for us? Of course, I have more weather for you guys. If you look at the three-day forecast, again, it is sporadic. But if you look more towards Saturday and Sunday, you'll see that it's going to get a little bit warmer. But also on Monday and Tuesday, we're going to have a rainy Halloween and Tuesday is going to be a little bit more colder and rainy. So that's it I'll, that I have on weather. Back to you guys at the desk. Oh, oh. sorry. No. When you look in Connecticut, we have it all pretty standard. 64 and 63 in Norwich and New London. Um, when you look at Hartford, it's 64. And then when you look at Torrington, Danbury, and New Haven, it's all in the low 60s. Thank you, Liz, so much. Now, President Joe Biden's student debt relief plan is currently on hold since the court wants to consider the appeal from its challengers. Q30's, Q30's associate producer, Joe Monte, has more. On Friday, the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals blocked Joe Biden's plan to cancel billions of dollars in student debt. This comes as challenges from six Republican states are being battled in court. The question here is not whether the government could um, you know, relax or even um, or even forgive these loans. It's it's really a question of whether the president can just do this. The question of the president's authority to cancel student debt comes at a time when students are struggling more than ever to pay for their education. College debt is really a problem for everybody. Um, the United States makes it very financially difficult to. Uh, get a solid college education. The plan to cancel student debt does not specifically identify who will qualify for debt cancellation. Congress will come into it sooner or later and start um, fleshing out the policy. You know, it just doesn't make a ton of sense to relieve the college debt of a student who comes from a family that you know is in the top 1%. I'm here on the quad getting insight from Quinnipiac students about the student loan forgiveness plan that was put on hold until further notice. Students have to work so much either during college or after college or families, you know, I know parents who've had to take on second jobs to help their students through college. Some students made it clear that they aren't looking for a handout, they need assistance. You can't just get borrow money and not pay it back, but I do think that there comes a point where if you're $200,000 in debt, maybe a little help would be nice. Students recognize the benefits of having some of their debt canceled. They'd be able to be more independent right out of school and they wouldn't have to rely on their parents. Some students say they are always thinking about student loans and it can be a problematic distraction. College is like kind of like you're kind of preparing for the rest of your life. So if you can't put all of your focus on that one thing, it's kind of detrimental to your future. Reporting for Q30 News, I'm Joe Monte. Gage, let's take a break from the local news and see what's happening in our country. I couldn't agree more, Alex. Joining us in studio is Julia Barcello to give us the national news update. What do you have for us, Julia? Thank you, Gage and Alex. On Monday, October 24th, several students were injured and two lost their lives due to a school shooting at Central Visual and Performing Arts High School in St. Louis. According to police, 19-year-old gunman Orlando Harris allegedly used an AR-15 style rifle and fired 600 rounds of ammunition. Officers made it to the scene within five minutes. The suspect was then shot and killed. Police say the suspect did not have any criminal history, but may have suffered from a mental illness. The first post-pandemic results of the National Assessment of Educational Progress are in. The reports show that school shutdowns and remote learning had a severe impact on young students. Only 26% of eighth graders are proficient in math, down from 34% three years ago. Fourth grade students' proficiency in math also declined from 41% to 36% post-pandemic. These declines varied based on the state the students live in. It's impacted students more in states that closed down schools for longer periods of time. 
On Sunday, a group of eight tourists was stranded in Arizona's Grand Canyon Caverns for roughly 30 hours due to an elevator malfunction. Four tourists were able to escape using the emergency stairs Sunday afternoon. The others stayed overnight in a motel at the bottom of the cavern Sunday night. After a number of failed repair attempts, it was determined on Monday that a search and rescue team would be needed. By 8 p.m. that day, the rest were rescued and brought back to the safety using a pulley system. And that's all I have for national news. Back to you at the desk. Thank you, Julia. We are going to step aside and take our last break of the night. But when we come back, we will have Hannah Smith talk about the latest in Quinnipiac sports, as well as celebrating National Pumpkin Day. We'll be right back. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I play JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This I is good, that. and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is, prediabetes can be reversed, and for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. I know what you're thinking. I need a job. I need a new career. Well, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. After high school, I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to start working. I got laid off twice. But you got to keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a two-year IT program. I found a medical course online. I'm now a consultant in the tech space. You have more options than you think. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. Welcome back to the Q30 Newscast. The Quinnipiac Esports Super Smash Bros team finished the National Association of Collegiate Esports with an undefeated record entering the conference championships this weekend. The defending MAC champions are led by Smash captain Jonathan Mason. This team has won many tournaments and claimed many championships so far this regular season. The team will also participate in the Collegiate Esports Commissioners Club regional event from November 4th to November 6th. It felt uh, reassuring because like a lot of the times I'm always doubting my own uh, decision making because uh, there's always there's always something you're going to look back on and say oh I should have probably played this person then and uh, I probably should have something else and it's just kind of like to be successful like that I'm, I'm on my first tries is like really really feels good. Now we will head over to our sports report for the night. We have Hannah Smith live in the studio to give you the latest on Quinnipiac sports. Thanks, guys. The men's ice hockey team took a trip up to camp in Bangor, Maine, where they faced off against the University of Maine Black Bears Saturday and Sunday. It was a slow start to the game Saturday as it was scoreless for the first two periods until the Black Bears were able to score four third-period goals. Tipping the puck off Yanni Frett's hand into the net allowed Maine to take control of their home ice and win 4-0. Quinnipiac did not head back to Hamden without a win as they returned for the Sunday game with power winning 6-2. The Bobcats scored four goals in the second period in the span of only 20 minutes, including two goals within 45 seconds of one another. The Bobcats are set to face Colgate next Friday for the start of ECAC play. There seems to be some passion in the air for the Quinnipiac volleyball team as they're on a four-game winning streak for the first time since 2019. The sweep over Niagara this past weekend allowed Ariana Diaz to tally 19 kills alongside Gunesh who tallied 27 assists. The team dominated the court as a whole and brought the drive to the Burke Con gym Sunday afternoon. Here's what head coach Kyle Robinson had to say about his team's performance at home versus Niagara. The Bobcats are set to face number one ranked Fairfield this Saturday at home. Can the Bobcats keep their winning streak or will the Stags take it away? There are five days till November and since August people have been 
closely following the women's soccer team as they're currently 13-2-1. With fall coming to an end, that means fall sports come to an end as well. Today, the women's soccer team had their last game in regular season play before the MAC tournament starts this Sunday. The Bobcats finish off their regular season with a win versus Mount St. Mary's. Olivia Scott dominated the field with two goals scored with assistance from Belgiari and Miganos. LeBurge set the Bobcats up for 3-0 in the 58th minute of the game, allowing Quinnipiac to take a final win at home before the MAC tournament begins this Sunday. That's all I have for the desk for sports tonight. Let's send it back to the desk. Thanks for the sports update, Hannah. On to some spooky news. Quinnipiac is hosting a free Halloween-themed event this weekend called Boomer's Boo Bash on Saturday, October 29th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Wearing a costume to the event is encouraged for all ages. Those that attend will be able to enjoy food trucks, participate in various event um, activities like face painting, bounce houses, and playing games to win prizes and more. Still on the Halloween festivities topic, Quinnipiac Dining hosted an event called Pumpkin Fest today from noon to 2.30 in the Cafe Q. During Pumpkin Fest, participants were able to paint pumpkins and try some delicious pumpkin bread. This event was one of many fun activities the university will host leading up to Halloween. Qthon is known for their dance marathon to raise money for pediatric patients in the Children's Hospital Medical, Medical Hospital. But they hosted a pumpkin carving event yesterday to raise money for awareness for a marathon in March. During the event, a variety of student organizations came together to claim the crown for best carved pumpkin. The group that stands on top as winner gets a shout out on Qthon's Instagram and possibly a few additional prizes. So we're hosting this event to raise money for Connecticut Children's. Um, what this is, we're giving out styrofoam pumpkins that people can paint and take home. So that's the beauty of it. They can keep it year round. They can use it for next year's Halloween. Now you probably noticed this wonderfully carved Q30 pumpkin by our fabulous producers. And it's to celebrate National Pumpkin Day. Yes, you heard that right. Tonight, um, today is National Pumpkin Day. And to give us more on pumpkins, Juju Mercado Bonanno took a trip to the pumpkin patch. Let's take a look. Located 20 minutes from campus in nearby Bethany, Connecticut is Clover Nook Farm, an eighth generation farm that was established in 1765. Clover Nook hosts many different events every fall for the surrounding community. Uh, so for pumpkins, we're uh, kind of a smaller pick your own uh, place to come for families to have fun. Uh, we have a pick your own pumpkin patch and we do hay rides on the weekends. There is also a wide variety of pumpkins to be picked, from typical orange ones to smaller gourds to yellow ones. That's why we grow such a uh, you know, wide range of varieties, even just for your standard orange jack-o'-lantern. I grow eight different varieties of them. Clovernook Farm grows pumpkins every year to the community, and in addition, has a general store that sells produce from local businesses. The store is a source of produce, meats, and dairy for their surrounding community. During the pandemic, they even offer roadside grocery service. Yeah, I think the people really appreciated that, appreciated the broadening, and it made it more of a one-stop shop kind of place for people. Traditional fall favorites, including apple cider and donuts, are also popular this time of year. I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. It, it's apple season. It's pumpkin season. That's, that's a lot of what people come in for around this time of year. As for the variety of pumpkins, Lars explains that the perfect pumpkin differs to each person. The right pumpkin is really up to, to you, the, the buyer, like it's whatever catches your eye. Um, generally, you don't want any with blemishes if you want them to last. Some of them lie down sideways. If you think you can make a cool face on that, you know, go for it. For Q30 News, I'm Julian Mercado Bonanno. You know, that was such a great story overall, Alex. It brings back memories from my grandparents because um, growing up, um, they always were, my grandpa's a big artist, so he loves taking good pumpkins, use that as his main, main canvas, main art canvas. So he does phenomenal paint pumpkin carvings and I'm sure he's doing one this year as well. Me too Gage. I used to do pumpkin carving all the time when I was a kid. Unfortunately they ne my parents never really trusted me with a knife too much so I had to do my best with a butter knife which never really works out as well but you know you can get as far as you want with um, the skills that you have so far. Well better than me because I had a plastic butter knife but <laughs> anyways in honor of National Pumpkin Day we want to hear about your experiences with carving pumpkins. Head to our Twitter at Q30 News to find our poll. We're asking you, do you carve pumpkins around Halloween?
We will tweet the results later on tonight, so make sure to give us a follow. That's all the time we have tonight. Make sure to visit Q30TV.com for more stories and check out the Q30 News app. Make, make, make sure to um, follow us on Twitter at Q30 News. To the producers, segment anchors, and everyone behind the scenes, I'm Gage Kilborn. That is Alex Kendall. Stay classy, Bobcats.